Hi, in this video we are going to take a look on how you can create a realistic thunderstorm inside of After Effects. If you are interested in learning compositing in After Effects, this is a good tutorial for you. I have provided a link in the description where you can download the footage I'll be using so you can follow along with this tutorial. With that being said let's get into the video. Once you're in After Effects and have imported the footage, the first thing you'll need to do is to drag the original shot footage into a new composition. Now that we have our footage in the timeline, we are going to remove the sky in our footage so that we can replace it with our own thunder sky. To do that, we're going to duplicate the footage by first selecting the layer then pressing Ctrl plus D. Now that we have two copies of our footage, select the top layer in search for tint in the effects and presets window, select the tint and double click on it or drag it onto your layer to apply it. The second effect we'll need is the levels effect, search for levels and apply it to the same layer. We're now gonna adjust the levels so we get a distinct difference between the foreground and the sky. Start off by dragging the white input to the left and the black input to the right so we get this black and white mat. We need this strong contrast in order to remove the brightest whites of the image. Click on where it says none and select luma inverted mat. If you can't find the options, you'll have to click the toggle switches button on the bottom left of your screen. There are still some parts of the sky that is visible, but that doesn't matter in this case. The brightest parts of the roof got removed as well, so we'll fix it by duplicating the bottom layer, select the pen tool, then create a rough mask around the roof. Then, go to the beginning of the timeline, press M to reveal the mask path property, keyframe it at the first frame, and then go forward and adjust the mask when it goes out of place. Make sure that the mask only covers the rooftop throughout the entire clip. Now that we are done keyframing, we will click on this little arrow to hide the layer properties. It is now time for us to drag in the Thunder Sky footage into the composition. Place it below all the other layers. As you can see the Thunder Sky doesn't move along with the footage. We'll have to track it into the footage. To do that right click on the original shot footage above and click track camera. The footage is now being analyzed, the track camera feature we just applied will create a 3D camera so we can place the thunder sky in 3D space and so it will move along with the footage. The analyzing is now done and it has generated a ton of tracking points. The points are sticking to the roof as the camera moves. Hover your cursor over the points and you'll see that a target appears. Right click and click create null and camera. A null and a camera has now been created. The null is tracked onto the roof. There's something you have to know. If your playback and rendering is slow, click here and select a lower quality to make your After Effects faster. You can go ahead and turn off the null layer so it's not visible. Click on the toggle switches button and make the thunder sky layer 3D by clicking on the fourth box. A small cube appeared, that means that the footage is now a 3D layer and tracked into the background. As you can see, the background footage is moving along with the scene. It's not wide enough to cover the entire composition. We'll fix that with the motion tile effect. Apply it to the footage. Change the output width and height to 300. Then turn on mirror edges. The footage has now been mirrored on all sides and it covers up the entire scene. To make the thunderstorm composite look more realistic, we have to do some color grading. Search for the curves effect, apply it to the bottom original shot layer and solo the layer by checking off the solo layer box. Go to the curves effect and drag the line down from this point. Then go further up the curve and drag it to the other direction so you get this S curve. We're doing this to add contrast to the footage. Go to the channel tab and click on the blue channel. Raise the blue curve a little to make it look cooler. 
Next go to the red channel and drag it slightly downwards. Then press Ctrl plus D to duplicate it, click on the reset button. Drag the curve down from the middle to lower the exposure. We have now created a moody night effect to the footage. Hold Shift and select both of the curves effects, hit Ctrl plus C to copy. Unsolo the layer. Then paste it onto the top original shot footage and the thunder sky footage at the bottom. Now that we have the colors corrected, we are going to make the thunderstorm interact with the roof, so it looks like the roof is reflecting light from when the lightning strikes hits. To achieve that, we're gonna apply the exposure effect to the footage where we masked the roof. Go to the first frame of the footage and keyframe the exposure. Press U on the footage to reveal the keyframe. Change the exposure value to 0.5. I forgot to feather the mask earlier, so we'll have to do it now. Reveal the mask properties by clicking on the little drop down arrow. Increase the mask feather to 29. Now, back to the keyframing. Move a couple frames forward until the lightning in the background fades off. Keyframe it to 0. Find the next lightning strike, and when the lightning is at its brightest, then keyframe it at 0.5. Go to before the strike hits and put it back to zero. Then find the frame where the strike has faded off and keyframe it to zero. We'll do this on all of the lightning strikes throughout the clip, so we'll achieve a subtle brightness flickering on the roof. Once we're done keyframing the exposure, we're going to select the track null and 3D camera layers, press Ctrl plus C to copy them. We will now pre-compose all the layers. Select all layers, right-click on any layer, and then click pre-compose. Make sure the move all attribute circle is checked, then hit OK. Press Ctrl plus V to paste the layers. All of the layers we just used are now put together into one single layer. You can double click on the layer to reveal the other layers if you need to go back and change something. It is now time for us to add some foreground elements into the scene. Go to the project window, find the bush photo, and drag it into your comp. Extend the length of the bush layer to make it last the composition's duration. Make it a 3D layer. Press S for scale. Scale it up a bit and move it to the side. Hold Shift and press R adjust the Z rotation to your liking. Just play around with the scale and rotation until you get something that looks alright. We will now blur the bush, search for the camera lens blur effect. Apply it. Crank up the blur radius to your liking. The bush is too bright and vibrant and doesn't fit the environment. We'll fix that by applying the curves effect. Pull it downwards to make the bush darker. We'll apply the hue saturation effect next. Change the master hue to around plus 75. The bush has now a teal color. Duplicate the bush layer and move it to the other side. Press R for rotation and rotate it. Make another copy if you need to. We have now created four ground elements into the scene. Before we go to the next thing close both of the layers. Click on layer, new then solid. Call it rain. Hit OK. Extend the length of the solid layer to make it last the composition's duration. Solo the layer. We need this solid to make the fake rain. Search for the particle systems effect and apply it to this solid. Open the producer tab, click here and position it over the frame. 
We want it to already be raining when the video starts, so go to the start and drag the layer until the rain covers the frame. Then extend the back end of it. Go to the effect and put the birth rate to 2.2 and the longevity to 1.4. Then go and open the physics tab. Change it from explosive to direction. And put the velocity to 1.4. After that go to the particle tab. Put the max opacity to 40%, then change the birth and death color to white. Once we've made this rain, unsolo the rain and drag it under the bush layers, so the rain appears behind them. We have to adjust its opacity to make it subtle. Press T for opacity. Change it to around 20%. We now have subtle rain in our composite. The rain is a nice additional element which will help sell the thunderstorm effect. We will now add light leaks to our scene. This isn't really necessary, but it's great if you want a more stylized look. We'll begin by turning off the visibility on the rain and bush layers for now. So the rendering gets faster. Go to the project window and drag in the icy light leak overlay. Go through the footage and look for a light leak you like. Then find its brightest frame. Hit T and click the keyframe button. Change the opacity to 30%. Don't go higher, because we want it subtle. Click the toggle switches. Change the blending mode to add. Go 10 frames back and keyframe it to 0. Then go around 14 frames forward and keyframe it at 0. Go and find one of the first lightning hits and drag the light leak so its opacity is at 30 when the lightning is at its brightest. Then go and adjust the keyframes so they match the lightning. We now have one light leak, but we want more. So Ctrl plus D to duplicate the layer. Find the next lightning hit, drag it over and try to synchronize it. Right click on it. Transform then flip horizontally. We're doing this to create some variation in the light leaks. Go find another lightning hit. Then click on the first light leak and duplicate it. Press U to reveal the keyframes. Drag it over to the lightning hit you found. Then adjust the keyframes if needed. I didn't really like the light leak in the middle, so I'm gonna adjust it a little. To make these light leaks look good you just have to play around until it looks okay. I'm gonna put the middle keyframe to 16% instead of 30% to make it even more subtle. The light leaks are now finished. Before we add the final touch to our thunder scene, close the properties to all the layers. Then turn on the rain and bush layers. We'll finish off everything by applying my LUT, it'll make all the elements blend together. Right click on any blank space in red timeline, then new and adjustment layer. Extend the back end of it. The adjustment layer has to be above all the other layers. Search for apply color LUT. Apply it to the adjustment layer. Find the cube file that you downloaded along with my footage. Double click on it to apply it. See how much of a difference it makes. You can lower the opacity of the adjustment layer to lower the strength of the LUT. Click on layer, new, solid. Make sure it's black. Click OK. Apply the CC Jaws effect to the solid. Turn the high down to zero. Then put the completion to 74%. We now have black bars. They will give the video more of a film look. The video is now done. Let's take a look at how it turned out. Isn't that amazing? The possibilities are endless with what you can do with compositing. 
we took a boring shot and made it way more interesting. Making a thunderstorm isn't the only thing you can do with this footage. Let me just quickly show how I can change the mood of this footage in a few minutes. Okay, let's take a look at it. You see? That there are no limits to what you can create, you just need a bit of creativity. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something from this. If you want more tutorials on filmmaking, like and subscribe to my channel. Leave suggestions for tutorials you want me to make in the comment section. Check out my Instagram for more crazy videos. If you have any questions, just message me on Instagram. See you later. Bon voyage.